And these are very disturbing allegations against a senior aide to President Trump, uh, Rob Porter, an uh, Oval Office presence and thought to be in the rise in the, the Trump administration, abruptly resigning today after two of his ex-wives accused him of years of domestic abuse. CNN interviewed both ex-wives today, and let me just walk you through what they told me. The first ex-wife, Colby Holderness, married Porter in 2003. She tells me there was constant emotional and verbal abuse and that the physical abuse began all almost immediately after their wedding. During their honeymoon in 2003, Holderness says that Porter kicked her thigh during a fight, and for years she says he choked her and would throw her on the bed, put his body weight on her, yell and grind his elbow or knee into her body. Then in the summer of 2005, Holderness says the couple was in Florence and that Porter punched her in the face. She shared photos from that alleged incident with CNN. You can see the bruise on her face. She said this was the only time where she can remember Porter actually leaving a physical mark on her body. And Porter has denied these allegations, which we'll get into uh, a little bit later. Now, Jennifer w uh, Willoughby, this is the second ex-wife who married Porter in 2009, 2009 rather, told CNN that she also endured deep emotional abuse from her ex-husband. There was an incident in 2010, for example, when Willoughby said Porter punched a glass surface on their front door and eventually the police got involved and she says the police encouraged her to take out a protective order against him and CNN has obtained and reviewed a copy of that order. And then in the December of 2010, Willoughby says that she and Porter had a fight and she went to take a shower and she tells me that he grabbed her from the shower by her shoulder, making her feel very frightened. So Porter is resigning, but he, he had a statement uh, about uh, these accusations and the White House seems to be defending him? That's right. Uh, well, first of all, Porter says that these allegations are simply false. Here's a statement that he released earlier today. Quote, these outrageous allegations are simply false. I took the photos given to the media nearly 15 years ago, and the reality behind them is nowhere close to what is being described. I have been transparent and truthful about these vile claims, but I will not further engage publicly with a coordinated smear campaign. Now, I should note, Jake, that Holderness acknowledges that it was, in fact, Porter who took these photos of her bruised face. She says she made him take the photos in contrition, but she says she absolutely stands by by her allegations. And in terms of the fallout at the White House right now, we are told that Porter resigned over the objections of White House Chief of Staff John Kelly. Now, Kelly said in a statement that Porter is, quote, a man of true integrity and honor, and I can't say enough good things about him. And two things worth keeping in mind, Jake, too, uh, as we learn more about the story, is that one, Porter is a top aide inside the White House who had uh, consistent contact with President Trump himself. And two, we are told by several sources that Porter has been dating White House communications director. Dr. Hope Hicks, one of the most influential aides in the West Wing. And you're told about the ex-wife speaking to the FBI. That's right. Uh, both of the ex-wives actually tell me that they were interviewed by the FBI regarding Porter's security clearance, and both Hold Holderness and Killaby tell me that they were honest with the FBI when they were being interviewed about their troubled marriages to Porter and basically shared with them, shared with the FBI, details of the abuses that they say they suffered from Porter. And notably, Jake, a source tells my colleague Jim Acosta that Porter ran into trouble obtaining a security clearance because one of his ex-wives raised the issue of domestic violence with the investigators. And, and uh, just to underline this, that means that the White House knew about this uh, because uh, the FBI interviewed the ex-wives on behalf of Porter, on behalf of the, the White House. You would assume so. We don't know right now to what extent, but you can safely assume, I think, that the White House would have been aware of these issues having been raised to the FBI. All right, MJ Lee also wrote about this on CNN.com, and there, there is another woman also with her allegations of her own. MJ, thanks so much. Uh, appreciate it. Let's uh, dive into this with the, the panel. First of all, let me just start with Chief of Staff John Kelly's uh, statement um, to uh, the Daily Mail when they broke the story yesterday. Rob Porter is a man of true integrity and honor, and I can't say enough good things about him. I am proud to serve alongside him. Um, no, he's not. No. Yeah. It, it's, uh, he beat his wife. It's, yeah, exactly. And, and what I think what strikes me that's so uh, really awful, Jake, is like we are in the Me Too movement where we're supposed to believe the women. And it, it seems as if 
the Trump administration has not caught up to them, to the movement that we're in. And it's incredibly troubling because we're talking about the White House. We're talking about the president of the United States. Look, I worked in the White House. The job that Porter has is incredibly important. While it's not well known, it's incredibly important because... Explain to people what a staff secretary Because is. basically what they do is they spend... The staff secretary makes sure that everything that comes in front of the... the, the, the on the desk of, of the president, that come, who they manage kind of who comes in and out, the memos, all of those things is the staff secretary's yeah. job. So they spend hours and hours with the president on a regular basis. And it, it is safe to assume that the, that the White House did know if the FBI did a background check on him, if they spoke to the wives, then that means the White House knew about this and still gave him this very important position. It's interesting, Susan, because you and I have been in this town for a while. We know people that apply to get in jobs in the White House, and we hear them going through the background check, and did they smoke a joint in college, and do they do this? Yeah. And, and anything can come back to haunt you, and anything until this administration really could, could block you. But uh, apparently the FBI knew and the White House knew about these charges. But uh, according to the reporting that we've seen done, he did not get a security clearance. And right. it's interesting that he was able to continue to do this job without a security clearance because, of course, I'm sure he was handling a lot of the material that goes to the president is, of course, classified. So that's an interesting point. You know, he, he of course, Rob Porter denies the allegations. But, but what surprises me about what the White House says is not that they is that they accept him and not the women, as opposed to saying we don't know what the story is. We think this is a serious issue, which is where Senator Hatch, a former employer of Rob Porter, ended up saying after putting out a very positive statement, he came back and put down one that that walked back a bit and said we take these issues seriously. This should be looked at. That would be this. That would be a justifiable position for the White House to say we don't know what happened. We we think it's important to look at it. But instead, they went all in on, on the side of. Of Rob Porter. And in fact, said that he he resigned over the objections yes. of John Kelly right. and others. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, uh, Kristen, let me, let me ask you uh, because uh, Susan just brought up Senator Orrin Hatch, and his original statement uh, attacked the media for reporting this these accusations and it's, and seemed to attack the ex-wives. It said, quote, it's incredibly discouraging to see such a vile attack on such a decent man. Shame on any publication that would print this and shame on the politically motivated, morally bankrupt character assassins that would attempt to sully a man's good name. Now, he has amended, and I will, in the interest of fairness, read, he wrote, I am heartbroken by today's allegations. This is today. I do not know the details of Rob's personal life, domestic violence in any form, is abhorrent, um, but I am perplexed by the first statement. Why issue that first statement? I'm very glad that the senator amended his position and issued the second statement, because I think in the case of that first statement, what you're seeing is someone who doesn't know the details of someone's private life, who's maybe only interacted with them in a professional setting, thinks highly of the job they have done in that professional setting, and feels an instinct to defend someone that they, they know and love. But I, I think Susan is right that in this moment, a minimum standard should be to say, let's all take a breath and actually investigate this, rather than attacking someone who's made these allegations. That that's the sort of progress that theoretically we should be making in this Me Too movement era. That doesn't necessarily mean that anyone who makes allegations is instantaneously believed 100% and the guy is always guilty, but that we should be in the business of taking a breath and taking things seriously. Absolutely.